Everyone's got it pulled up and we're in place. All okay. right. Screw anything up. Okay, okay cool. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. Check out this awesome idea from the champs over at Georgetown. Plan the United States federal government to restrict the president's authority for targeted killing as a first resort outside zones of active hostilities. Well, we better go with the James Madison route. After all, they weren't a part of any of the scandals. Plan the United States federal government should switch supervision of the drone program to title kind of the United States code. Even further west, UNLV has signed on ideas to plan the United States federal government not to substantially increase judicial restriction of war powers authority of the president of the United States by designating a district court justice to approve or reject targeted killing involving the use of drone strike based on strict scrutiny. You no, know, Cal Chico is also on that bandwagon plan. And the United States Congress should establish a federal court jurisdiction over targeted killing orders. Even Michael and I dabbled with the droney goodness plan. The United States federal government to statutorily restrict President's war powers authority for targeted killing using uninhabited aerial vehicles as the first resort outside zones of act hostilities, or maybe not. The way the topic asks teams to affirm the resolution stinks, advocating things like drone courts and other statutory legal restrictions and liberal restraints to the atrocity that we all know that the U.S. is committing overseas. This is a bankrupt strategy that simply places the hand of power solidifying their control over worldwide resources by endless racist war pair. The progressive labor party rights in 2013 Obama's outrage because the property driver driven US world economy to maintain the dominance of the world resource wide awards, such as their goal into drones of assassination, they live or all backlash on my politicians purely speaking because media millionaires won't help a class or an Obama's rate of terror. In reality, the upper aimed at improving the effectiveness of the murderous US war machine that seek to see your mass opinion down the dead and of following the boss's laws. That's judged by the boss's course. The liberal solution is for Congress to legitimize uh, assassinations. A kangaroo course similar to the one that Robert Sands governor Wyatt has won. I think the critics include CFR. I think Think Bank will by Exxon Mobil, JP Morgan, Chase, and Rockefeller's drones gravely deployed could harm this faction. This is a faction. Effort to stabilize targeting global empire based on the control of oil. CFR couldn't care less about the 100, uh, uh, the 1,128 civilians incinerated so far by U.S. drones despite the backlash against Obama from the liberal ruling class. These forces remain more dangerous and more, more, and more openly fascist conservatives with neocon rulers, liberal bosses hide behind democratic masks and use it to develop populist appeal. They don't uh, pose drones they want to govern their use to make them more palatable to the working class. Meanwhile, the retooling of the war machine to, uh, from their imperialist rivals, nor should the racist aspect of this butchery be overlooked. Drones dropped the Rico bombs in Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia, not Europe, where North America racist attacks have been seized for the U.S. rules of the routine police tactics, stopping for assault and murder, uh, single out the overwhelmingly black and Latino workers, and you know, we think that this is because the way the American public and debate community debates uh, drones is too often focused on whether or not they are doing their job. These are the wrong questions to be asking. Instead, we should call uh, attention to the human suffering inflicted by our drone program. A good place to start is somewhere like North Waziristan, one of those so-called tribal areas that America can't quite comprehend, where all, all aspects of cultural and uh, human life are under assault from above Stanford Clinic Road in 2012. Much of the debate about drones likes to focus narrowly on whether strikes are doing their job, i.e., whether the majority of those killed are militants, that's for any tables they able to take uh, for people on the ground who live in the daily presence with a constant threat of uh, drone strikes in their communities. It aims to draw attention to the critical gap in understanding about life under drones. These impacts are significant. Uh, challenges of prevailing narratives to protect drones and precision weapons limit the collateral impact of this crucial broader civilian impacts the voices of those affected. The given way the U.S. debates about drones, the most direct impacts in addition to injuries and killings include uh, uh, economic hardship, emotional trauma, the presence of drones, patches uh, uh, strike everywhere, uh, uh, any time, uh, logical content, severe anxiety, uh, 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 severe anxiety stress. Uh, uh, especially with the inability of those in the to ensure their own safety to your fear of strikes. Uh, they provide social gatherings, educational, economic opportunities. Two is also undermine general community trust. The U.S. practice strike in one area multiple times, killing first responders makes both community members and humanitarian workers uh, afraid to assist injured victims. Those killed or injured in several ways, including incineration, trapping, and blasphemy, capable of crushing internal organs. Those who do survive often suffer severe and verbal trapping wounds, like uh, mutations as well as vision or hearing loss. And who are ironically named targeted killing program have inflicted thousands of painful injuries on all sorts of people who would never even get targeted. Was in 2011 someone they uh, duly is lucky to be alive. Even Whoa, 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 and missiles from U.S. drones toward the Hood family close out at North Wazir's hand. He survived his wheelchair bound uncle, and two cousins all died. The attack was aimed at a militant leader who was never there. Sadula is one of the more than 1,100 people who were reported injured by the CIA's attack. The injured who survived their severe but severed limbs. They often tell me you, you cannot really call me lucky. This is not London or Islamabad. There are no facilities for the disabled in Wazir's The Bureau has uh, covered at least, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, 100, uh, 1,117 people whose injuries were severe enough to, uh, to, uh, to mention in the press report. The injured are a mix of militant civilians, uh, adults, and children through. No, there are things really important. In addition to physical trip, pain, drone strikes have created the conditions for endless psychological trauma in the areas that they frequent interviews with people who have been struck or know people have been struck. It made a terrifying picture. Stanford and Clinic in 2012 from the ground is possible to determine who or what they are tracking in a circle or had the bottom of the uh, distant propellers and concert minor bimming. That's a grinding experience living in drones hell on Earth. God knows. Uh, they'll strike us again. Oh, 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 strike, yeah, strike us again or not, but they're always surveying us. They're always over us and you never know when they're going to strike an attack. Attack is any psychiatric explain the basic glory of future trauma. It's anxiety, common conflict, zone of control, ability, core element of anticipatory anxiety. 
the emergency department the most common pain raised by interviews humanitarian workers stated that although for safety he was he even he felt constant fear do you remember 9-11 do you remember what it felt like right after people were uh, afraid about what might happen next people do not know if there would be another attack this is what it was like continuous tension feeling continuous enemies you start to wake up and hear every noise and meanwhile in the United States former drone pilots like Brandon Bryan are starting to tell their story one of psychological distancing ending in mass PTSD and borderline official worship for the drones dear Spiegel in 2012 Brandon Bryan worked in an oblong windowless container the side of the trailer where for security reasons the door couldn't be opened when Brian pressed a button in New Mexico someone on the other side the, someone died on the other side of the world Brian remembers one incident very clearly when a predator drone was circling above Afghanistan there was a flat roofed house made of mud but a chance used to hold goats in the crosshairs when he received order to fire he pressed a button causing the drone to launch a hellfire missile there were 16 seconds left to tell impact moments like these are like slow motion images transmitted by satellite with two to five second time delay but seven seconds ago there was no one to be seen Brian could still have diverted the missile then it was down to three seconds suddenly a child walked out around the corner second zero was the moment in which Brian's digital world collided with the real one Brian saw a flash of light on the screen the explosion did we just kill a kid then someone answered someone sitting in a military command center somewhere in the world who had observed their attack no it was a dog a dog on two legs when Brian left the container that day he stepped directly into America modern warfare is as immaterial as thought deprived of it meaning by distance neoliberal warmongers are waiting more not only globally but internally using the body's own self-defense to render us passive the anxiety PTSD and psychological trauma generated by drone warfare short circuit subjectivity by turning experience into a biopolitical zone of annihilation only challenging that autoimmunity can undermine the suicidal war machine's effective legitimacy Valley 8 in 12 the control that effectively coincides with biopolitical government's life's emergent and emergence to seek to administer his directive and also suicidal stories <coughs> of the immunity and autoimmunity preserved the integrity of the collective by defensively violently incorporating the exterior of Western society see the globe uh, as the war zone where the defender and definitely stage of capitally trying to incorporate the outside and the liberal as the psyche appears to, as the war zone where the defense against danger becomes the number one priority neoliberal biopolitics in the name of self-defense turns the world into a battleground where any perceived threat needs to be eradicated the PTSD turns into a cell the starting that varies appears foreign forces and just something can only get rid of by destroying cell or no longer the, uh, the, the, the only possible end for the global coexistence but the only uh, 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 effective reality of what, uh, what matters is, uh, isn't speculative reality but the exponential multiplication of the things that would uh, really that would like to be avoid, uh, avoided the immunitary paradigm of protecting life uh, for whatever friends. This is the burden for the reservation of life becomes annihilation, suicide process, the perfection of PTSD. But well, look, such not immunitary logic and epistemological and the administration of PTSD through specific discourse material immunity demonstrates that uh, the uh, little, little wall of uh, uh, killed would make life live actually prolonged. It's not an immunitary crisis, the impossibility of making clear distinction between life and uh, its annihilation do not do much but keep on reproducing the trauma and celebrating fear to enemy the beginning of your cycle, which is called by crashing fear. Uh, uh, finds no salvation because the very experience of fear of life is seen as essential life. Then a graphic image is animated. The basic affectivity of the run the brain's ancestral death. Respect the world outside makes the subject violently attack any element of the friend itself. We want you to consider the impact of pain as possibly more important than any other factor in debate. Makes everything worse. Hawkshire and or the state is showing the truly morbid interest in the public complaining and denying it's really more to affect social change. Uh, uh, pain after all is a threat behind all threats. The power behind any negative reinforcement of the stick and the carrot stick dichotomy. All too often it is used to modify human behavior all by itself. The awful thing is it works pain. It's what makes tyranny possible all by itself. Pain and kill you pain. It's every bit as excruciating as the racket for spoke to burn victims for the last people. Even the most powerful opiates are not nothing normally beg to die whatever else is wrong with the guaranteed condition of pain well make it worse and the resolution is not a passive object of knowledge but an apparatus of production and reproduction of bodies and other objects of knowledge or affirmation is one that becomes the topic is an active meaning generating apparatus of bodily production there uh, are way in seven situating knowledge of the tools of the adapt to understanding the uh, production and reproduction of bodies and, uh, and other objects of value uh, material semiotic act of treating object of knowledge is such active meaning generating acts of production without ever implying the immediate presence of such objects there are finally we need determination of what as objective knowledge bodies are uh, uh, bodies of object of knowledge and material semiotic generating those other bad materialist social interaction objectivity not, not just engagement but uh, not taking risk of the world where you're permanently mortal we have no clear distinct idea of the world which is being reduced to meaning in bodies uh yeah you might as well read this and specifically, it's important for privileged students and students of debate or advocacy. Though negative voting negative is merely a private party with a singular state of uh, misery, Zemelias, and eight. Uh, while well, witnessing trauma in the classroom, emerges that teachers and students are questioning, taking for granted the subject about self and other. But what it means to respond to suffering, to constantly interrogate the constructive ethical and political relations, to energize ethics in the politics of suffering, by acknowledging the possibility of witnessing emerges of body, the force of the conscience that the law obligates the other affective aspects of suffering in the classroom. To acknowledge the material of suffering bodies is an effective pedagogical force method to making private bargains with other materiality suffering. That for a renewed critical mobile of affective connections in order to pursue new understanding of social relations in a way of uh, being in order education students need to hear what's painful about being trapped in historical categorization. So hearing will not only be possible in the classroom trauma narratives are claimed in uh, uh, either one's own exclusively universally the same. It, it's a completely uh, different thing to learn, uh, learn here another page and respond to the pain and critical uh, uh, witness not expected many privileged students resort to. Uh, okay, I'll send this out right now. Mark it that, that last box. Yeah. Uh, the last, okay. Um, so you can go ahead and start pressing. Okay, cool. um, so based on that last card, how do we evaluate whether or not you decrease the ability of the United States to exert biopolitical governance? Um, 
we think we question the United States' ability to do that. So questioning is all we can do? Um, I mean, there are ways that we can change it, Michael. You right, but the point of uh, the argument, and, and the, especially the Zemblias card, which you normally read in the 2AC, says that kind of we need to reorient ourselves in our relationship to pain before we can kind of make these so what's prescriptions. Your so, so, th so the 1AC is a reorientation towards a relationship with pain? Towards affect, yes. Okay, towards affect, got it. So let's okay, talk I about... Just sent it out. Uh, yeah, you're good. Um, let's talk about Hawkshire. Yes. Huckshire is talking about pain and carpal tunnel in particular, how bad uh, physical pain is. Also, as that, victims. Sure, yeah, and that we can we should uh, use uh, poppies, literally opium, to treat pain. Yeah, that's one of his solutions to it. He gives the examples of even the most powerful opiates are not enough; they normally beg to die. Okay, um, let's go up to uh, sorry the um, I want to talk about this Valiaho twelve. Because I, I think this kind of goes with your the, the distancing argument, right? Like part a part of the neoliberal new these new neoliberal wars is a distancing element. Can you talk about that? Um, yes. It, well, the, is that a different the, card? The, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it, well, the distancing piece of evidence is probably either the Brandon Bryant testimony or the Stanford one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, both of them discuss the fact that drones have made war very immaterial and distanced from the actual fact. War is bad in every instance, but particular in distancing, it allows the American public to feel like why, why is war bad? For it because it causes pain and pain is bad so we should reject pain yes yes okay um let's what do you mean that the resolution is a uh, meaning making topic uh, so opinion. basically the resolution you know it has words or whatever but the resolution is not the words itself or kind of any individual debate about it it's the amalgamation of the relationship that the community accepts towards it it's it meaning our ground is meaning generated. So, so it's almost like a, a, a uh, like an, an embodied form of the community right like you can kind of see that as almost as a right when people talk about like the debate space right it's not about any ground it's not about like the structure because of the there's debate. a democratic process and selecting the topic and it, a lot of well, research no, goes not, into it. not even necessarily that it's just that Debates are a place where we kind of clash ideas together, and the stronger one comes out. So, so it's about the, the way that we decide. What's the advocacy of the one AC for testing this? We don't. The, the one AC doesn't have like a specific written down advocacy. Why? Because singular statements of purpose are reductionist. They're instrumental. They deny the affect that was the one AC. I think we read some pretty good narratives that should have made you feel something, and to like p condense that down to like ten seconds is pretty reductionist. Uh, yeah. Um. Also, your uh, your the narrative you read actually. Let's talk about that. It's pretty graphic. Um, yeah. Why wasn't a trigger warning included? Um, the article did not include one. Was one of the reasons. Also, like, if this was a concern, you knew you were debating this. You, I mean, so the onus is on me. Well, no, not necessarily. But uh, if there was a concern about that. that <coughs> oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here. We're we're gonna take some prep for a second. So oh, never mind. It would actually be a better view than what we're getting. Right. <laughs> well, first you have the speech docs, and then you have the stream, which is like completely virtual. Interesting. Trust me, I'll be listening to the debate. Oh my god! No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what it seems. It was like a minute delay. So you might. It might be kind of weird. Really, it's like a whole minute. Uh, usually it's only about 30 seconds. Yeah. Right now it's a I can program it. Just say something yeah. rude about uh, Kirk so we can hear it. 9.35. Yeah. Okay. Or like, like, talk some shit. <laughs> yeah, Kirk, yeah like, like, like really quietly to like the here. microphone so that he can, you know. Well, it was kind of like, we had these ideas and then they just can like get in and change their strategy to judge talking shit about what they're saying right now. Yeah. Yeah. Did you respond to the second one that got I looked at it. 
Do you respond to the second or the first email? Yeah, you respond to the first email. Okay, so let me just go ahead. I'm sorry. That's my bad. We're doing this thing great today, aren't we? Yeah. It's a good thing we're streaming. All right. In violation, the affirmative must have an advocacy statement. There's not the entirety of the one you see. They don't. This is so that they don't. This is specified to us pre round and B voting issue one focus. They must specify their advocacy so we can engage them educationally competitively. The whole one you see is the advocacy of this fails because different language of the one you see mean incommensurable things. We can't even determine what they're advocating to AC and one error can pick and choose to avoid links and prevent or pre prevent engagement makes it possible to compete. Crushing equity and locking resource inequities also proves any partner or critique is abuses. We can't tell what their original advocacy is. And second is going to be education. Critical education depends on, uh, depends on, uh, on reductive comparison methodology, which is impossible. We can't understand the advocacy. This is super sharp in the context of the debate when we're making arguments that may seem similar without focusing in specific context. Their authors conclude next that they make key linguistic and technical distinctions in DTF author ISA specific advocacy statements. They make the uh, debate shallow and anti educational. Third, there's a non abusive version of the affirmative. We're not asking them to read a plan or role play as the United States federal government only to give us an opportunity to have a focused educational discussion by identifying an advocacy. We do it on the affirmative, pr proves reciprocity, and that we capture all their offense. Now, the criticism. To the Air Force, my father was a number, a number that was eventually called to serve in Iraq. It was by, co it was by coincidence that a couple weeks separated my father from his replacement, Eric Burks. My father tells me that Eric's family hadn't even finished unpacking before Eric was shipped out. During all this, my brother and I continued playing Sega with the Burks children because after all, a father being gone was nothing new. When Eric returned, my father noticed a difference in him quickly. Needless to say, being in a hostile environment changes a person. Despite them both being in the military, there was something unique about being in Iraq to create a fissure between them. My father and Eric talked it through though, over games of racquetball or at our family cookout. That dialogue was something that my partner Luke never Excuse me, we turn to a debate and activity that's obsessed with the war. I was as much to blame as anyone. I took refuge in the nuclear war scenarios of Reddit that left Luke feeling isolated. It was not until Luke approached and read this very position against me in the squadron that I recognized the connection to my own past, to Eric and my father, even to Clay, who was a part of that war, shaped my child in ways I didn't understand at the time. And it's something that's always a part of me. I hope my narrative shows Luke I understand the complexity of his experience and how they have shaped and debates obsessed with war is deeply problematic, especially given our concern with issues of race exclusion. That's core understandings of war naturalize the very racial exclusion the effort of wants to resist war creates endless cycles of ethno nationalism that sweep away any progress made on issues of race. By resolving the vibe between sword and citizens, can we solve the problem of war and move forward on the question of what race? That's Cowan 07. War has been understood as, honor, as organized violence of Christian neighbors, sovereignty, state, permanent, and monopolized divide between war and politics, geographic divide between exile, national, national, We're making war something that's already, already separate from politics, terrorized war of the sovereignty, state, they serious for the word of the rivers, the national polity had the effect of uh, rational, uh, nationalizing political matters to reach inner class struggles, have been naturalized through national war against foreign enemies, foreign enemies, and resulted in, in racist, ethno national concern of the beauty of the people, emerged spurring pro nationalist policy that encouraged biological reproduction of some women. The national imagination of war has been powerful, class politics, commanding legions, into a social and economic cleavage, separation between the soldier and citizen, a central feature of the nationalization of the soldier is the antithesis of the modern citizen, the right associated with the political uh, belonging and liberal democracy, almost Entirely incomplicable, the soldier operates as this means democracy following that question. From above, it ties to the soldiers in a hostile outside city. It might contain something else because the military spans the border, the, the, the territory organized nation state system with studying soldiers is a means of brother separation from inside to outside. And militarism is a product of the images and stories we consume and produce. That's for rhetoric manufactures consent, uh, consent and mobilizing the country towards conflict by silence of those who come to face the pain. The soldiers, our method, breaks the epistemological barriers of, 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 of politics to reform current conceptions of war. That's grand 07. It relies on the field of vision of a field of vision through selective images of politics, including focus upon guide when multiple perspectives may appear. Because it's difficult to exhort a pop sword to choice, world, the zone, the system, must for living, right? Mobilize the spirits must be concretized in a pre linguistic organization. We're living so invisible, directed for our We're unable to redirect the vision that we are unable to know. We are directing our own side, direct the transform the whole side in a field of perception. We act as unthinking bodies. We cannot think of other bodies. The wounded troops are kept out the cameras. We the war between my imaginary whole bodies. The little perch war resistance and all that's come up. Giant comments become sealed directors. Ocular range can never coincide with itself. Pain keeps howling through the war zone. And in national policy discussion, the authority general's presence always trumps that. Trump the stories of individual swords. There's no space in the world to the affirmative for Luke to tell the story. The future is to frame of the one scenario and plan me. We can never share the experience of those who have already been affected by war because we're already being called to prevent the next occurrence of the alternative offers a pedagogy that reclaims our ability to understand war without our alternative in this future war is inevitable. It's Ingalls and Sauce 13. 
Acquiescing in rhetoric, make complete tantamount to opposing the truth. Acquiescing in rhetoric, drawing their social effect the generals, uniforms become the new white lab code, the symbol of the time, to authority, the facilitator, the beating, the fame, moving me the framing of public sin, uh, the, 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 the discussion of facilities, acquiescing, contemporary words, and the rhetoric of acquiescing, very warned in pretty layers of political resentment, specific details are excited from the public realm, the authors of Bonds, the president, the national security status, who displaced their, uh, displaced their own responsibility, the orchestration of war, Americans are called to acquiesce in the system, I made are already made that, and actions already taken, even those critical citizens rest in peace with war, citizens are really asked to harness the beginning to support the war effort, but are called to passively cede their wills to the machine of endless war, Obama's, Obama's, Obama's embodied the world of wartime character, controlling the citizens, look for rather than examine the presence of uh, the present state of endless war, those to authority cells, don't worry, we got this, just go back to everyday business, bring the, uh, the objective bonds of war out to the opposite, all faded by war, can meaningfully question the ground, means an end to battle, making the uncontestable, contestable, critical, and the pedigree, the uh, reactive and activist, public by creating space to talk where we have been silent, and... The embodied presence of soldiers is key to the discussion of remotely piloted vehicles. They affirm the rights of the soldier out of political thought and subsumes the experience of the soldier tied into the mechanical assembly to the drone only opening up the debates of the president's experience of veterans can remedy the affirmative abandonment of the soldiers of Williams 2011. There is much that can be gleaned from applying about body centered experiences approach to uncover the specific of how war fighters uh, encounter combat. We can only uncover the collection of the situation by considering military uh, aircraft and similar to blend human and machine elements to produce one combat entity. The ability of entity to pre exist the side warrior and similar is a key to understanding reaper operation because it enables to acknowledge the pre existence of both the human and the machine within the assembly that it provides the ability to unpack the ways in which they come together. Hybrid machine organism with the operation of the UAV dollar or sharpler were amongst the first rules the need for an embodied build geopolitics that would actively rewrite the everyday experience of individuals get uh, back into geopolitical events that enable the experiences of marginalized groups to be rewritten geopolitical thought and enables to consider how the actions of those active generate their own micro micro scale geopolitical practices and veterans feel so marginalized in their identity, identity that last year 22 they committed suicide every day 22 they have no place to tell their story feeling as though they have slipped between the cracks that's going to be seen in 13 two trapped order to be a piece of damage to be awarded their, their, these are the words of pts they are the words of the interstellar Eric Gorbin, who took his life is known to give a clear take what's that stuff from war related psychosis my mind is a wasteland filled with visions of incredible horror and crippling anxiety so much more to combat mission the machine gun so much clear so there's more than just some of his wartime managers they release finding that 20 u.s military veterans commit suicide every day that's more veterans than the children killing sandy hook every single day were the huge policy initiative by the president but those said the universe because we were occupied by a single loser rabbi, his own system of demons, just neglect and indifference. As of March 24 hour, Christ led help with the 28,000 veterans in the for Daniel. He needed more, and it wasn't there for him. He fell through the cracks, and thus the, and thus the alternative in this round. We should welcome military veterans through storytelling. In this round, we should welcome military veterans through storytelling. Storytelling is only for returning veterans to reclaim their identities. In fact, the Status Quo Academy signs the voice and experience of veterans, putting them at risk of terminal education failure. The way we construct our conversation about war makes our activity come listen into the academy. The academic setting is unique site for the possibility of dialogue, the dialogue between students, both veterans, civilians. That's more 2012. The techniques you techniques you to train children to combine with the college and the device to lead to the feeling of extreme alienation with society and basically in school students to support to play roles and maintain these junctures trying to anticipate an environment that lodge veterans worry heroes while erasing their experience of forty sides about completely feeling during war and one ship is lying to control troops for war groups and the other one veterans isolated and strange their privileged classmates and professors in between like space in which veterans must reintegrate. We can also we can improve them with the faculty staff and peers interact with veterans broader national discussion about the wars we buy making college campuses based with the narrative can discuss by those in combat doing so we can better understand the consequences of national policies and first step in understanding veterans challenges would be to listen to their experience. Case. The app centers the one to see around the pain of someone who has been oppressed. This allows the dominant power structure to retain, retain control by co-opting the other's pain as the oppressor's pain. This allows the dominant power structure to control how and when we listen to the oppressed. This guts any chance for true resistance that's stuck at Yang 14. The fixation and listening pain source of community that are, that are not white and not wealthy and not straight. I, I, I mean, the fascination of telling of pain is troubling for its voyeurism. Imagine, imagine yourself to be, the, to be a voice in some, in some disciplinary inter, uh, iterations. The voice of the colonized. We reproduce stories of oppression in its own voice. Hooks to the core message. No need to hear your voice when I can talk about you better than speak than you speak about yourself. I am still author authority I'm still calling out the speaker something going now at the center of my talk writing recognition the presumed voiceless recognition that is enamored with knowing with knowing through pain the research itself is made anew by telling the story of the marginalized uh, the marginalized uh, the, uh, the subject and subject the forces that invite those on the margin to speak also say do not speak in the voice of resistance only speak from that space in the margin and the margin that is a sign of deprivation only speak your pain and they introduce the pain of individual, individual political meaning making their um, uh, 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 making that obviates their agency and leaves their bodies spent that's dead off 99 Injured bodies come to represent abstract, abstract ideals. The pain of the body is used to, con used to confer meaning. The incontestable, the incontestable reality of the body dead is separated from its source and, con and, and, con and conferred a political authority. The, re the, re the, res the, re the, re the resignifying function of war transformed death into a meaning making practice. The pain, uh, the pain combatants feel is transferred to the ideology. The victor, that once they are used to confirm legitimacy with the soul to be effectively used up. And. Get that now. Go to the last part. Go to this last yep. And. The one you see should have come with a trigger warning. Luke's veteran, Luke's veteran that lives with PTS. This is a deal because of the question of in round exclusion that's made, uh, that may cut in 2012. It's important in terms of awareness for mental health. The trigger warnings are now common. That is a great deal because trigger warnings are invaluable. They allow control over what you choose to look at. Drinking happens uh, as a symptom of PTS. You know, PTSD the triggering is immediately the more painful the trigger, the worse it is to explain. So we're often left with the vague arguments about offensive topics versus freedom of speech, which is entirely relevant. A call for trigger warning is not a plea for censorship. It's a, chemi a chemical reaction. When something, when something triggers repress memories, they stream into your conscience without consent. It makes you relive it. You feel like you're 
experience the incident again in real life until it stops. And their answers and crossings were tragic and shitty. They didn't include a trick warning because the article didn't include one. This turns out advocacy. They are ready to introduce pain and focus on an aspect of positive that offering agency for those who do not wish to be re-traumatized. This isn't a word, K. This is about giving those that suffer the pain that they are advocating agency in the face of ableism. Oh, um, uh, anything? No, never mind. Never mind. There wasn't another card. I'm sorry. Okay. There wasn't. An, there wasn't another card, right? Everything was. No. no yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Are you all good? Yeah. Okay. Um. So, you say that the best method for debate is to allow the storytelling uh, and the welcomeness of people who are veterans of war zones. Right? Well, we don't say that that's like a prescription for like the best method of debate. We think that in this round we should do that. Okay. And okay. in rounds where the veterans are present, sure. Okay. And uh, I, I, I'm wondering because the one AC. You say that we should have them discuss their pain and discuss that pain. That's, the first card That's not what we said. Okay, what is it? We say that we, they should tell their stories. You're the one that thinks it needs to be a focus on pain. and I don't know why a war story has to be yeah. painful. I have a lot of war stories that are about you know spending time with my brothers. So that shit ain't painful. We can't talk about pain because like... We didn't say that you can. can talk about I just don't know if it should be the focus. Evidence. We, no, the Tucker and Yang says that your evidence solely focuses on pain. And when we do that, when we use pain as our sole focus, that's what allows it to be co-opted. I mean, that's exactly what happened. What is a military veteran? A uh, military veteran is someone who has um, who has served, served abroad or served for three years. Am I correct? Yeah, served in yeah, military. military. Served in the military for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't define military. it just as U.S. I mean, our evidence is contextual that because we're talking about U.S. universities. Okay. But sure. Okay. Um, the CNN evidence <coughs> is the story of uh, Daniel some, Summers. Yeah. 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 Daniel Summers, who yeah. committed suicide, had crippling anxiety. Why wasn't there a trigger warning for that? We did. Yeah. Where? I don't know what you mean. Is that the top of the speech? Where? There is no trigger warning no in this trigger document. Warning in this document. Uh, sure. It's also not a graphic depiction of him committing suicide. Who decides Similar what's graphic? to what is your description. Who decides sure. what's graphic? What do you mean? I mean, you can make your double turn argument, dude. I mean, we'll what? just, we'll, I mean, sure, we can have a debate about what, what, like, is graphic. This doesn't have a depiction of how, how do you commit suicide? You don't even know from this depiction. It's not graphic. Okay. Um, what is an embodied presence? Does that mean just physically being here, or can it be done through the storytelling, right? Like, do I, have sure. to be, do I have to be a soldier to have, like, an embodied presence? Well, I'm not a soldier. Okay, okay, so we can we can talk about other people's experiences, right? What? No, why am I... Uh, who's talking about someone else's experience? He's a civilian. He's talking about yeah, his Yeah, I'm talking about my experience with my father. Okay, so we can only talk about our experiences. We well, say that you should... You don't talk about your result. We think that you should certainly start from those points, and then when you focus other people's experiences specifically on pain, that's how we get to that tuck and yang evidence. Okay, you have any questions? No, um, no, not necessarily. Uh, I guess the question... No, just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> so, what constitutes a story? What constitutes storytelling? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's uh, probably something from like a first-person perspective about your experience, I think. Okay. Luke, do you have it's any? It's a narrative. Look, yeah. I mean, if you want the one AC to be your story, you can say it's your, your story. Okay. We, he read a story. I guess I have a story. You read a lot of evidence about how like the scenarios of the one AC or the link. What what were the scenarios of the one AC? Um, sure. I guess I guess even if even if you don't want to talk about like the specific scenarios of the one AC, we think that we read some other specific evidence. We think we read the Williams Eleven evidence. Yeah. We talk about the. You do talk about like these endless wars, neoliberal sure. wars of biopolitical governance that are happening and going sure. to happen in the future. Okay. Cool. Futuristic friend.
there anyone not ready? Nine. Okay, fair enough. It starts off with, I think you're finishing a card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Case to case right now. Okay. Anyone case to case. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. This is a debate about faith through the lens of squad debates on drones. Hiraway says debate is about what we make about the topic, not its precise wording or any specific red R. <laughs> community standard of intellectual engagement with one of the four topic areas has been woefully insufficient all year because it exclusively focused on deaths instead of pain. Voting app rejects the current model of drone debate where the question is how to make drone policy better and more efficient. That is a conclusion premised on regulation and control over a pain by a neoconservative elite. It is a politics of defeats, and we have three internal links that they have not responded to. First is the physical pain that drones inflict on people like in North Waziris and second is the anxiety and second psychological violence from constant surveillance. Third is the PTSD of drone operators. The role of the ballot is to vote for the best team or best, performably and methodologically interrogate the role of pain. This is key not to boot the nine minutes of one DC offense. We did this by introducing the neighborhoods of those who have conducted and experienced drone strikes. Pain should come first as an answer to their attacking the young evidence because the point of the apps that we all feel pain. We do not allow it to be commodified because their evidence about the black body not about students and attempting to interrogate their own relation to privilege outweighs because it makes everything worse. Their impacts are inevitable plus so many world where we vandalize to analyze pain. They also do not have any impact defense, which means that neoliberal accumulation should converge that the PLP evidence are rejection of liberal reformism removes uh, war mongers grips on important resources that underpin the ability to engage in colonialist actions and to start wars in the first place. Second of all, pain, short circuit subjectivity, which the Blahio evidence means that our impact turns the K and T not theirs. The ace point is the current with which compliance is bought. That is carrots and uh, because it is the carrots and six of the body, which is the hot chair evidence piece point. Pain first is key to coherence. Their impacts are impossible with uh, the existence of pain and psychological violence sees point it takes out all solvency because they all the, the alternative cannot interrogate uh, just the body with uh, the, without the psychology behind it also uh, they uh, say this talking the evidence I'll finish the Zambalaya's evidence here many uh, privileged students resort to rational arguments or sentimental rege uh, re uh, reactions that fail to acknowledge your own emotional acknowledgement that affects the way we know that by denial of guilt they resist that they are part of the history of trauma materiality of suffering fight space for mourning transform feelings into practice responsibility transformation this is specifically key for Kyle and I because we can just rationalize away our complicity in the drone program and talk about why it is good or why should we establish a drone court as some liberal thing but we, being forced to confront the raw materiality of it means that we can not just advocate the United States federal government do something also uh, they link as well because they talked about uh, things like uh, they talked about things like suicide and there is no uh, bright line for what constitutes pain and uh, for what constitutes a uh, depiction of suffering they say pain gives up political agency drones refuse agency because they are in they instrumentalize those on the other side uh, of a drone also they link as well because they uh, talk about the soldier's body being used up and being uh, being chewed out and rejected by the uh, war machine, which is the reason that the uh, look. These, there's no link differential between these. I dare the block to explain one. Now, this trigger warning argument, they should not make yeah, to make an abstract argument that someone could have been triggered. We uh, told them about the one AC and they uh, didn't even mention it to us in pre-run prep, which means PTSD should not be a gotcha moment. If this was the, not the one AC for you to engage, we could have read a different app, but we wanted to engage the argument you've been reading all year, which is why we read this app. This uh, wiki also functions as a trigger warning. You have time to mentally prepare yourself before and to come to us if there is a problem. They link as well. They talked about specific suicides and cross proves that there's no bright line from comes to triggering for some people. The mere discussion of self-harm is enough, which means that we should not make, uh, we should not orient debate to weight just because it is not universally accessible. Case outweighs we should not just ignore the physical violence of drones because it's not comfortable. It's also not comfortable to be constantly monitored. They is not a D-roll. They should not get to double turn themselves and make it a D-roll now. On to topicality, counter-interpretation, the affirmative must provide a topical engagement of the resolution that is in the direction of reduced uh, war powers. We mean we are in the direction of reduced war powers related to drone strike. No topic version debate would be about 10 seconds of the one I see this uh, instrumentality changes the type of education we perceive by foregoing uh, questions of affect in favor of sole focus on uh, instrumentality for framing issue for their impact a point nebulous impacts like uh, predictability and education don't exist they are impossible to universalize between instances and aren't benign because they reflect commitment to a particular world view be point there is no impact of fairness disparities are relative it's historically disproven and also uh, self-correcting it's also not reverse cause because uh, voting on it voting on this in the last round of the year doesn't make it uh, to be more predictable also don't 
evaluate competing interpretation, default reasonability, voting against is a big penalty, they should have to win, that we make debate impossible, and also there is no objective standard for textual interpretation, Jerky 98. Any policy debate in order to understand means must interpret text means or found interpretation, different no text in it to make it inspire one universally agreed upon interpretation. There is no way to reconcile interpretations objectively to evaluate competing interpretation. And also plan uh, focus is bad because singular statements are inherently reductionist. We are an active politics DA because we are what we perceive. The 1AC with nine minutes of affective association. The fact that you didn't even talk about the people who were drone struck or the kid who walked out behind, behind a shadow was drone struck without knowing what the fuck was happening means that this is elitist. There is no justification for textuality. First conquer good. Uh, to the hegemony of textualism needs to be undermined. The brute metaphor underpins the supremacy of Western knowledge by risking space of agency and struggle from everyday politics that exceed the verbal non the uh, people recognize the opacity and text and critique its privilege and systematic exclusion scholars need to move beyond this ideology is communicative more uh, forms for all uh, for all uh, cognitive exchange also education flips out because it's a question of pedagogy for me to be through the pedagogy responsibility for education I will do this more on the go there now Look, I'm literally not sure what the link to this K is. That we talked about soldiers the wrong way, we didn't talk about enough, that it wasn't exclusively focused on debate. We talked about both the physical and psychological effects of drones. People like Brandon Bryan who are telling their stories about the distancing and PTSD that have made their bodies a war zone, but do not limit to the, to the discussions that is convenient for us to talk about. There are those who are considered military veterans because their entire service is in a windowless container. Also, they say racially, we are part of debate's current obsession about war. We do not talk about any specific future war scenario, just that there is a neoliberal accumulation happening that makes war possible and that we should stop that. We do analyze the relationship between war and ethnic nationalism. That is the PLP evidence I'm referencing that says we drop bombs on the Middle East and North Africa, not the Europe or U.S. because we don't want to drone strike white people. We want to drone strike people who are different from us. Now, they say pain images. Like, I, I, I answered this in case, but the pain is also not a unique instance of pain images. That's inevitable. It is a question of whether we listen. We are all complicit in the normalization of drone uh, mentality and detachments of understanding. Do not displease pedagogy or responsibility. Hughes, uh, 12. Make people bear witness to the violence and irrationality of war. Say you were watching news and the anger talks in a monotone about the deaths of civilians in Pakistan and marked by a drone, and your roommate immediately changes the channel. Your roommate doesn't understand the gravity of the devastation any more than the anger. How about the person sitting behind the joystick pressing buttons to release the hellfire missiles? They hide the uh, truth from themselves. The drone pilot, the anger, your roommate are all complicit with disavowal and defense mechanisms, which a person refuses to recognize their traumatic perception. A community of acknowledgement can bring the consciousness and unconscious, like college classrooms, to make uh, sense of the events as committed to the very nature of the war and terror. It's not allowed community of acknowledgement. The people are unable to argue the ethics of war divided, separated, unless we become conscious as a community. Uh, the truth of violence we are creating, well, unless we bear witness, we are locked into violence as we cannot escape. They say, telling stories, like, yes, we do. Uh, let an individual, not an officer, tell their embodied story. Brandon Bryan talks about how uh, about, about how he was constantly second-guessed by high-ranking officials that, uh, and that they are presumptively true. This is the dogs on true leg story, where he told someone in a container place thousands of miles away about something that he had saw, and they told him it was a dog on two legs. Now, the Zambalias evidence says a justification for perm to the affirmative as a welcoming of military veterans and perm to both be included in the voice and the one you see. But we have three diseds and only the permutation solves one. They have a limited definition of soldiers. They say military veterans and talk about three uh, years of service in a specific uh, in a specific group. They have a very America-centric view of what a soldier is. The people we drone strike are soldiers too, even though they aren't necessarily part of an organized military. The one I see is about different types of soldiers too. Is the historicity diseds. That's Zavalia who evidence, memories, and histories are neutral. Force recollection of the past and structures imposed on them is itself a psychological violent act. Overcoming the affect of destruction inherent in historic connections is a prior question. Three, is proximity focused bad? We should not exclusively focus on the people involved in war or debate itself. That's the, also the PLP evidence. CFR would love it if you didn't question the war machine, but only accepted that the people it has chewed up and spit out. There are two links. First, they privilege the Americans who do not live under drones of a Pakistani and Yemenis who do Gregory 13. The U.S. The public debate is fast on the summary of power of the president, those who brought the legal administration apparatus through which oh, Obama administration conducts targeted killings, focus on the attention of Washington. These are important issues, no less concern the ways in which drones have turned the life worlds into death worlds. This needs, be, uh, this needs an even wider angle and serious mistake to abstract drones from the present grim reality of ground war. Neither the genealogy nor the geography could be separate from the matrix of violence of which they are part, but and the matrix of remain primary target of critical analysis, political action. This is a trade off to say that flows out the problem of the debate community are categorically different from the raw physical pain of drones like this actively enables material pressure. Ton uh, five and model that views public issues through a personal lens, never since it's definitely part of providing political and action, whereas the objective of political argument is an instrumental such as fertile solution, such a conversation, top uh, self expression, talking cures, discourage, search for a political solution, a uh, public problem solution must be structured, not personal. Me analysis move, but uh, move beyond personal experience and less transcendent. There is no only small group interaction. One second, we need a drink. Good.
So let's talk about this. Um, can you explain your sorry, just real no, quick. Can you explain it. your uh, historiosity disadvantage? So right, the Volagio evidence says that kind of like force. Uh, when we talk about a war and we talk about the body, right? That we don't focus on the kind of psychological side of that. That we may welcome bodies. So is the are those pain things, the psychological side? I think is, this is, is pretty important. The psychological side are those things uh, separable? Sure, go for it. I'm sorry, we're interrupting. So we talk about like you know the people, the numbers of ground troops in Afghanistan or whatever, but not the fact that while they're in a place that we have physically categorized as a war zone, there's an internal war going on that we have imposed upon them, and that is that is a based on a historical connection that we should not kind of force an, uh, that we should not kind of force uh, okay well yeah. then I guess the question sort of is why do we do, why is referring to them as soldiers key to that then what well that's sort of like what, what you do now, uh, can you, I, can you ask him about the trade off to said uh sure go ahead we ask yeah him. what's what's the trade off to said so, the variant debates different than from Grimshire well yeah that's kind <laughs> of it it's like the alternative is to welcome the voices of of soldiers in debate, right? We see that sure, it's not right. just about welcoming them into debate. It's about centering our analysis sure, sure. more broadly on the structures that enabled the soldier in the first place. Sure. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. All right, so um, another argument I'm a little bit confused on, I think is that you make the argument that we don't like privilege the people that, you know, these other forms of war, they're having these internal wars, correct? I think you mentioned like well, that, the, well, Pakistani pip, uh, the Pakistani people, I think is what you mentioned when you made uh, the argument. Is this towards the bottom? Is that I like, think, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this bottom. argument is that when we focus on like the debate space or kind of what debate should look like, but that's really privilege, right? Because we don't have to begin our question with why are we drone striking so, people we will never meet, so that never means, interact with. So that means necessarily when you focus on pain, you can't focus on other things too. Well, that's not our argument. Our argument is that we should not so, limit it to debate as a space. Rather, debate should be a space where we talk about things outside of ourselves because it forces us to remove us from our proximity and our kind of comfort zones at a very so, comfortable, cushy debate. So a better alt text would be like the globe should welcome military veterans. Or mo more like military veterans ought to be, uh, well, I'm not even sure what like an alt text is because I've made arguments that, you know, reducing things to a text is bad. It's more about the sure. argument that you have made that we need Just to focus on like a specific idea. people in debate. I guess I sort of understand there then. So I think another argument that you're making here is that like focus on pain is key to like focusing on like the psychology of like, you know, this soldier. Why is that true? It's not, well, it's not just like psychology. Or it or seems as if you're trying it's to make the affect I'm, of it. It seems as if like because we do not have a focus on pain, you think that we are not also discussing psychology. Is that correct? Like the psychology of the person? Look, you may be discussing these things. You have not done so in a way that is an opportunity cost to the app or in a way that necessarily is an offense antagonist. Okay, to sure. The so it's not so it's not an argument that we don't also access that argument. It's an argument that you also you may talk access about the pain, same offense, right? But you, but so you may like talk about that they're pain, not competitive. But first yeah. of all, it's not competitive. Second of all, so, yeah. you talk about pain in a very limited way, i.e. So, only have soldiers in organized militaries and in the So it's like there's space. other people we also do not talk about. It's it's not just a link of omission, but yeah, I guess. Well, okay, sure. I'm not saying it's a link of omission, but that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Yep. All right. Let me, let me send. I'll, I'll send it out. Make sure it's all good. Oh, so What's it saved us? Well, this is it. This is yeah, it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Have you sent it already, or is that what you're nope, doing? I'm not now sent. You can stop. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna like be on the? The order uh, will be the criticism. I am pretty much uh, going to go straight down. Um, I'm going to answer, but I'm not going to answer like the perm specific. I'm going to answer the perm discounts, just so you leave some space in there on the perm specific if you need it. Did you get it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I got it right this time. Okay. Trigger warning, my narrative includes uh, triggers for combat PTSD. This time four years ago, I was like every other debater preparing for important tournaments and polishing my trophies, but within a year, I found myself halfway across the world in a combat zone, hunting down roadside bombs. Every time I saw the blast of those bombs, I felt a surreal sense of displacement so far removed from my debate simulations. When I returned, my mind was still stuck, crouching with my brothers behind my tents, waiting to hear the whistle of an incoming round to see how close we come to death. Unfortunately, debate demands that I leave those experiences behind. To me, wars, the months been preparation, training, life platoon, and then realizing no idea what the hell we were doing when we got there. But it's also coming home to a different world, the structural balance I felt at the hands of the VA, toying with my mental health status as low as a budget category. So when the topic was announced, I nearly quit out of frustration and not being able rectify my identity as a soldier that has bodily experienced war with a debater that plays it as a game but my story and others like it need to be shared our argument is simple and simple and it's complete the uh, you should buy for the team that best welcomes military veterans through storytelling we have a couple key reasons first to the scene and 13 evidence that says that Daniel uh, Daniel Summers discussed the war inside his head when he came home to institutional neglect and indifference uh, from both the VA society and from the and from the administration this results in the uh, this results in uh, many veterans are feeling so alienated that 22 of them commit suicide every single day that's uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, 22 uh, commit suicide every single day. Second is the more 12 are evidence which says that we must create discursive linkages through narrative in order to reinvigorate our educational scenarios. We are, are brushing elbows with, uh, with, uh, debate, with, with, with both debaters and students that are veterans every single day and only by recreating the, the, through storytelling can we engage with them dialogically which means the alt is a prerequisite to any effective knowledge production for the 1AC and third is put a personal face to the pain of combat trauma in order to prevent the obsession with war. This is the grand epistemological argument that the reason we're able to mobilize war rhetoric because people do not personalize it, and then that's, that's what inevitable, uh, what allows the count seven argument, what, al or what allows us to roll back questions of race, gender, and class exclusion. That means that war inevitably becomes the instrument with which we absolve politics of any sort of change. But moreover, the only methodology that includes the body of the veteran can break down the justification for militarism. The critique solves the case. McSorley 13. Most social theory of war and militarism is not considered wars of practice focused on the body tends to render any demarcation of wars and problematic is not their bodies of combatants and victims ever produce their central to war, but the bodies of veterans, the inculcation of consumers of the anti culture and militant into entertainment as seductions by the expense of developing any critical capacities to engage with matters of military might is through uh, practices the legitimacy of having military force to become something not through a uh, uh, thought but uh, routinely felt in everyday life. Such examples point to the need to think about the reproduction of war and war readiness in terms of militarization sensation. And, and, and the body, you got it? No, not this card. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it, it, but uh, uh, it, it, this specifically talks. This specifically talks about the way that the criticism turns the it turns the case. But, but while avoiding the, uh, the while, while, while avoiding the link to the pain specific focus, it is possible to uh, it is possible to not have to focus specifically on the pain, but also to s still solve for their impacts. For example, like this uh, uh, neo uh, neoliberalism and these neoliberal wars, right? It is possible to solve uh, solve for all of those things. Um, Furthermore, extend Grand Seven from the one AC, extend Grand, Grand Seven from the one NC. Uh, Grand talks about the way that the Bush censored the images of flag draped coffins and made horse planes carrying wounded soldiers to land. And I, I just sent it back out in order, in order for them to effectively. What well, during my speech isn't that awesome? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in order, in order to effectively mobilize the political, uh, uh, mobilize the, the nation to war. The only way that we're able to go to war is when we think of the soldier as a whole body and not an injured body. Therefore, you keep injured bodies out of the frame of reference, and in that way, it's an epistemological regime. There, uh, their one AC only thinks of the soldier as injured. 
injured, and, and, and which is the inverse of only think of the only think of them as whole. We need a complete image of the body, which means they, they can never access our epistemology. They, this means the discourse controls institutions that come first, come, comes first, not the other way around. <clears throat> Further, though, <clears throat> yeah, they say let's go to the uh, the um, perm de de sets. They say that we have a limited definition of who veterans are, but this is not a this is not a limited definition. The only thing we consider is a normative starting point of people that are excluded now and the local personal locational experience that I speak from. This means that there, there's no link to the threshold of exclusion that their impact will allow on that. Second, second of all, they say hist <laughs> the, the, um, the history uh, historiosity uh, dissent. I'm still not exactly sure what the historiosity of this is, but storytelling would necessarily reinvigorate the way that we think of stories, not by only reliving through the past, but also by rethinking the past and what happened to us in the past and thinking of the past in new ways. This uh, internal link turns their stories are also the dissent. The second, third, they say the limited proximity just said that we are only proximal to, uh, we, we, we shouldn't only think about people that we are proximal to, but you must uh, engage personal experience as a starting point in order for any um, in order for any of this to happen. This is a specifically a, a link to the affirmative. The only reason that they, the only reason that uh, <clears throat> This this is specifically this is specifically a, a, a link to the affirmative. This is the only reason that they, that that, uh, that they read a narrative instead of engaging personally. When you when you don't engage it personally specifically, though, it leads to an ex our expertism to said. <clears throat> Their inability to establish a personal relationship to war footnotes those that do, like myself, a Yeho 13. Soldiers' testimonies are included as personal supplement at the terms of discourse set by the experts. Mainstream news reveals an image of veterans as passive victims. Soldiers' experience functions as a supplemental to the discussion set by those authority. This only reality. Soldiers are capable of exerting no power over decisions. The experience is not applied to discussion of war policy. Soldiers are relegated to personalizing, making us feel reality. Others have already told us soldiers are viewed as significant yet as individuals. They will little authority. A key feature of the scapegoat. This is particularly important, for example, when uh, it's particularly important, for example, when they use their dare speak evidence. They are relying hard on this to include the narrative. That what they don't include is um, what, what they don't include is the narrative that they clip out of uh, that they actually clip out of this. Uh, um, that they, yeah, sorry. The, this is what they don't include is that what they actually clip out of this. For example. <clears throat> Colonel William Taft, right after the, right after where they cut off the dare speak law, Colonel William Taft critiques their distancing, distancing arguments good because they erase the uh, dr uh, drum pilots and promote the exclusion of veterans. Dare speak 12. Colonel William Tart, uh, uh, William Tart was a commander at the uh, Creech Air Force Base where he had a drone operation. The term "colonel war" makes him angry. It reminds me of Vietnam veterans who accuse him of never smell blood. Who say he doesn't know what he's talking about? That isn't true. We watch for months. We see them playing with their dogs. We know their pattern with no behavior. We go to their funeral. One of the paradoxes of drones, even as they increase the distance of the target, they create proximity. War somehow becomes personal. That means it's necessarily about engaging pro approxim approximately because for drones every for the drone for the drone pilots everything is possible for them within, within their own uh, within, within the uh, within the drone experience moreover they also say as far as um, this uh, <coughs> They say there's a per we are privileged Americans don't live under drones. Guess what, dudes? I have lived under drones. I have benefited from their protection, and I've also seen the kind of uh, a a a backlash that they endure when they, they endure when they go awry. Um, they say that um, there's a trade-off this happened by focusing on debate. We don't think you should only focus on debate, but this is a prerequisite question, right? Before, and specifically, if their knowledge production arguments are true, you must necessarily engage the veterans in, 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 in this way. And Grand would also be a reason why we're a prerequisite. Let's go to the roll the ballot argument they're making up the top. <coughs> They say that the role about is who best uh, performing uh, interrogates pain. I'm sorry, I, 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 this is on this is on the case, but I'm gonna do it here. They say uh, who best performingly interrogates pain, but your ballot represents more than an academic orientation like the affirmative with the negative. Your ballot represents a process, a dialogical process of storytelling. They say the ballot should represent interrogation pain, but that is uniquely bad for some veterans. Storytelling represents a way to ease them into a narrative of identity. They can't solve their pain because guess what? To me, war isn't just about pain. War is also about the good times had with my fellow brothers that I cannot separate myself uh, cannot separate myself from. Further though. Only a personal relationship to war can produce effective topic knowledge and avoid complicity with institutional violence. This answers and turns their argument so we don't focus on our citizens, our, uh, so we don't focus only on citizens or only on veterans. Our argument method is necessary to engage through personal affect, so media tour 10. Sensitivity, violence, and direction, think is what I need to live, find ways of living together, influencing massive violence, all, uh, our emotional response, and response can turn attention to such projects, public affairs, experts, our ability, psychological damage, war inflicts, the absence of these issues from debate on war reflects tendencies to avoid phenomena that deserve a great belief. Experts are prone to avoid phenomena that makes us claim as a human being. If we are to confront violence, or injustice, we need to face phenomena that are disconfitting, uh, marketed disconfitting. <clears throat> 
Furthermore, their story of distancing is wrong and offensive. It's not that the pilots are distanced and therefore numb. It's that they are distanced and therefore helpless. This results in a survival guilt that is not pain but mental anguish. There is a difference. Home Quest 13. Virtual wars, less virtual men would appear. Drone off operators suffer high, possibly higher rates of PTSD as soldiers engage in battles as results of exposure to high resolution images of killing, including the details of casualties and body parts that would never be possible to capture with the human eye. The view of the hunter killer is privileged as the drone operator empathizes with his comrade and feels compelled to protect and help them by instructing the instructing to shoot. Furthermore, this is sort of lack of distancing by saying, well, they're so distant distance from the things that they do leads to an unacceptability, uh, 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 unacceptableness of accountability. This is also embodied in the way that they focus on how drones are doing X, right? How uh, Obama is doing X, how the U.S. wages war X. The U.S. does not wage war, but Obama does not wage war. The individuals are the ones that push the buttons. Hunter's narratives are key to hold soldiers accountable for their actions. Any alternative to dehumanize the soldiers cause the hideous wartime atrocities, Genevieve's 13. Many veterans feel shame for what they have done. There, there's no place to explore that by shaping memory into story. We pull back when we learn about our fear and love and the limits are failing to acknowledge the stories may have committed atrocities, robs the soldiers of autonomy, we may as well our humanity cannot soar, the story cannot heal, the berserk state was inhibited when Staff Sergeant Bells left his base and murdered 16 innocent civilians, including nine, nine children. But um, this is just an example of when you just show pain, it's bad. you got to give them agency to tell their story, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm really interested in this argument you made that says you have lived under drones and you got the benefit of protection from yeah. drones. Uh, yeah, they weren't targeting you because yeah. you weren't Middle Eastern. I'm wondering why True. the backlash that was experienced from drones, why your security under drones should outweigh the backlash that you saw to drones. It Just doesn't. I, I don't think it does. Like, dudes try to kill me because of that. Like, I don't think that outweighs the security I got from it because it put me in an even more dangerous situation, right? Like, So, I guess, okay. So, so what, what I'm saying is you're you're right. Like I I was privileged, but I have also experienced the other side of that. It's not just that drones are targeting people, wait, so, but some people are also so, experiencing so wait, the security. Wait, 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 you were this goes back to you, you were can't afraid of the backlash that the United States caused. And you're saying that that is equivalent to living under a drone 24 no, hours a not, day. No, I'm not. I'm not the one making equivalencies. Okay. You're the one that's saying war is good, bad. Personal you're the one that is simplifying things. Personal relationship to war. Uh, I don't have one. I've never been in the military. Oh, uh, you do. You have a pro man. Every single time somebody gets up and reads a nuclear war scenario, that is a war being created right then. You didn't watch CNN when the Iraq war was happening. You haven't watched any news over the past like ten Wait, years. Wait, so I should just like forefront like my kind of abstract? How do you relate to discussions war? Discussions or. Right, we you did talk you, you about that at the top of the Your discussion was already abstract when you chose to use experts and then supplement Wait, that what right, experts? Next, right next to... <laughs> what experts? We have a lot of... Valiahu like, is a philosopher who... or Sorry, not a philosopher, but a political theorist who is an expert in neoliberal regimes. Uh, and then you put and then you put okay. Mr. Bryant's narrative right next to those experts. So when Mr. Bryant talks about the pain that he feels next to these neutral experts, it footnotes him. Uh, okay, but what... We put him first so that we would hear it and then contextualize you it. Right, exactly. That's the point. You say, look, this person's story is important. Now let us contextualize it with all these rational facts. This is exactly what the evidence calls out. So wait. The war hearings that were held in Congress, that's the result of it. They literally said, come tell us about your experience so, so we can rationalize it. So you're it. saying a better version of the 1AC would be us to just get up and like talk about, like, I don't know, I lived like 10 minutes from a military base. That's my personal relationship to war. That would certainly make me feel more welcome than reading some dude's narrative and he's not even here. Really? So yes. we should just focus on our personal experiences. Yeah, the Stony Media Tour 10 impacts that claim and says that it's key to avoiding systemic violence that you are critiquing. Um, okay. So, so we have a link to your method on pain. We have a link to the fact that you refuse to engage personally in storytelling in the 2AC and that you refuse to, and that you only uh, uh, engage through experts. Um, okay. Aside from the institutional focus, so wait, that I extended. You, you said we didn't. Own, is it about only engaging through experts or just including no, it's a sequencing anyone question. with a degree? It's a sequencing question. That's the that's the question that Grant makes. The reason that people are footnoted is because of the way the image of the soldier is biopolitically managed, like Grant says. Okay. That people you use this, the soldier. I have like ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make this argument that we censor the coffin so that we only see that it bodies as whole. We yeah. need to see them as both injured and not whole. How yeah. do you determine when someone has PTSD? How do you determine whether they are whole or not whole? Well, you don't. They do. And they get to tell their story. That's the point. Okay. All right. I'm just sending the document out now. Um, it's going to be the criticism, um, the procedural argument, and then case. Criticism. Sure, it's going to be the criticism, yeah. um, the procedural, and then case. 
And I'm oh um, if you need to know where I am on the critique, I'm gonna be doing the perm level. The, the, the perm proper yeah, stuff. Yeah, perm proper stuff, sure. Um, he um, answered like the disaster the perm stuff, and it's gonna be separate. And I'm now clicking reply all oh, yes, sir doing this file of an attachment. Alright, one in our round eight. And if everyone could please confirm, it starts off with my narrative and then perm. Since I have sent up their own documents. That has happened. It wasn't today, was it? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. <coughs> I'm assuming the file's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I downloaded the wrong one. I should be good. Luke's narrative about collectivization reminds me of an example from my high school graduation. My principal asked vendors to stand so we could applaud their service. My father, among several others, stood. The room flooded with applause. Hundreds of people filling their patriotic quotas for the week. And I looked to my father. I knew that he was uncomfortable with his time in the Air Force. He didn't see himself as the hero that we lauded him as. Now, this is a story about my father that would never be able to exist under the, from under the framework that the affirmative exists because it does not focus on the pain. Now, I'll talk about the, curve, the permutation level of the critique. First off, I don't really understand what the first perm gets him. It's essentially, we saw the critique impact arguments and incapable of resolving any of the links because it does not result in the criticism. The second part also seems irrelevant. They say they do both, but there's not an explanation to how that functions. There's also not a piece of evidence for it. Unless you know what it means to do both, you can't vote for that. At the end of the round, don't allow this part to resolve the links to them because it does not include a personal relationship to war. It means they don't just get to say that they do part of our app. They have to perform the stories. And we also think that all permutations should be advocated. There are three reasons why you can vote on this first, that even test of competition is still an advocacy. The opportunity cost of the ballot means the test will eventually be advocated when it's voted on, assuming the perm is an advocacy. The only way to prevent the app from being vague and moving targets is they did not Specify that's a voting issue for fairness. Remember, they have already said the perm can result in some form of the all being performed. Second, the permutation must have a card and solvency advocate. All tests of competition have cards. The perm should meet the same standard. No result links without a card. It's impossible to know what the perm does without a deeper explanation than just do both. That's key to research. We don't know where to begin researching the perm if they don't have a card. That's a voting issue for education. And third, it's a competing method debate. That means that the starting point should make the mutual exclusive, especially when they, when, they, when they still link to the criticism. They can't endorse the practice of welcoming veterans while engaging in practices that alienate them. This is a big deal. Don't let them move the entirety of the one to see by saying, just a few words. The net benefit to this is that multiple methods are bad. The perm only use of the critique is window dressing. That's on Madden Seal 2012. The unreflected pursuit of MMR without due attention to ontology effectively does a little more than juxtapose single method studies that at best produce findings that share, that share a family resemblance as a result of significant conceptual stretching and at worst employ one method as a mere window dressing while I primarily on another to substantiate the core argument. Now I'll go on to the procedural. We're not going for. I'm just going to be. I'm just going to put an answer on the concrete evidence. The card is in no way a justification for not having a text. It's simply that using that using that using text can sometimes be alienating to people who have other modes and other and other forms of communication. We're to be honest with those other forms of can't communication. Apply to the exist. Alternative yeah, it can't apply the alternative. It can't the apply to the alternative. We're not using that text to limit. It, it can't apply to limit. It just this means there are other forms of communication. We have a bunch of reasons why having a stable advocacy with the most effective method of communication to be read on that flow does not indict advocacy in the context of debate specifically. We'll go on yeah. to the case page. Um, uh, we'll go to the case page starting with the trigger warning stuff. <laughs> They say we double turn ourselves, but they were between a content warning and a trigger warning. Triggering is a physical chemical process that occurs when individuals are re -traumatized. traumatized. The McCutton 12 evidence that I read, just because something is hard to talk about, we mentioned emotional concept like anxiety and depression does not make a trigger. They, they say we use trigger warnings to shut down the baby. This is a common misunderstanding that's currently holding our discussion of accessibility back, which also turns the argument trigger warnings are placed agency on the individual to say no to engaging that or to prepare themselves. They say the wiki is a trigger warning, but there's no guarantee that people go to your wiki, and that's pretty ridiculous anyway because they would just get triggered when they look. And they say self harm is enough for some people. That is True, but we engage in abstract specifically. You engage in specifics intentionally. There is a oh, excuse me. Um, there is a material difference when you know you're debating an individual that has self-identified as having PTSD, including a narrative of trauma without a trigger warning, and introducing universally emotionally uh, use, uh, introducing universally emotional concepts like suicide. If suicide is a trigger for either of the ass debaters, we are legitimately sorry. But the offender didn't even apologize. They automatically assume Luke was doing it for competitive success. And do they even know what a PTSD episode can look like? The UNLV term and Luke was triggered by an Oklahoma debater, and his own partner could not tell. That's because calling this. And numbers are both combat adaptions. They're not the ones to judge the mental status of another human being. And they make debate not a safe space. They're turned to their advocacy and pain and literally introduce the pain to the round. Prefer in-round action for theoretical orientation. That's Stabbers 13. 
There, uh, there are many who would rather avoid, avoid seeing things in your mind than the trauma instead of inadvertently relieving horror trigger warnings not for yourself, therefore others know something is a safe but that doesn't mean we should so the, do as an excuse to stop trying and uh, stop using these and stop using the internet measures which do help people find trigger warnings and vastly helpful resources that mitigate the effects of mental health problems of being able to make decisions and this is a prerequisite question do any of their knowledge production they need the knowledge the noble production process traumatizing the knowledge production can never escape the stain of ableism and they want to talk about pain or no way to manage the representations around that pain so people are left to their own conclusions on, on how to fix it their hot trigger evidence concludes that we should use opiates that be a force is opiates on a onto veterans. It does not distinguish between physical pain and mental anguish. It becomes an endemic. This is the story of Jeffrey Wagner. Let's glance 13. The VA has supplied Tim Fozzie with nearly 4,000 pills since he returned home after tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was never in physical pain, but used the pills to blot out feelings of guilt for surviving. The government van picked up Jeffrey Wagner and in orders to detox from a brutal addiction of painkillers, but instead, medical records show, show, show the VA kept him so doped up that he could barely stay with the ex because the VA released him, with, released him with a cocktail of 19 prescription medications, including 12 tablets of highly addictive oxycodone. Uh, oxycodone uh, three hours later, Wag uh, Wagner was dead, said his father, Greg Wagner, you send your child to a hospital to get well, not to die. The Tuck and Yang evidence. <coughs> The first piece of tucking the first piece of tucking yang is particularly important. They they will make the argument that it's necessary to inject these narratives to inform us privileged debaters. But at this point, the Zimbala the Zimbala evidence fails. It fails them. It is not necessary that you have to do this via pain narratives. Our narratives serve as the proof that there is an alternative to this. Not only that tucking and I know that tucking yang are the link here. The tucking yang evidence specifically says that uh, the, the, the pain narratives there is no need to listen to the person because you already can talk better about them than they can talk about themselves. It also shoves them into a corner so that we can only hear pain narratives from them. That is all that they are able to have. Now then now the, now the, the, the link comes from this piece of younger Tucker Yang we have another piece of evidence here that serves as uniqueness for that like we do this for knowledge production they're participating in these same types of bad practices in this quote right now that's our Mazen Durrani El Tal 13 evidence collecting and analyzing stories about people's experience or illness or major activities and popular research methods little social activities have been applied to examine the political economic method and ethical dynamics that plan and play into what we tentatively refer to as the commodification of illness experience the rise of different and over like marks in which illness narratives are produced curves are related use and exchange earning value in different ways for different people key uh, examples of such commodification of the growing market for how to after about people's experience of illness the prolific um, sharing of information about those experiences on social media. It's also a reason why the permutation will literally never go solve any of the alternative because this Tuck and Yang evidence says they'll only be able to share these pain narratives, which you've already said. There's other forms, uh, yeah, there's other forms that will never be able to be expressed. They won't be able to resolve the criticism. Yeah,
up the two man's mistakes. But <laughs> <laughs> I should know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ice cold. Like no, oh, no, he's the. Enemy. I'm the one A who never cleans up oh. mistakes. <laughs> you, oh, you all could know I did it. It could have been good, but he was just self-deprecating. Yes. <laughs> it's weird. That seemed more positive. Just rolled the <laughs> <laughs> Good work here. All right. Very good. Um, hold on. I'm downloading that card. Extend your role of the ballot. You should focus on pain first. They have conceived like a million reasons. This is true. First of all, it is the carrot and the carrot stick dichotomy. It is the stick and the carrot stick dichotomy. Because the stick will always be used and able to use the stick against this. This turns the entirety of the all was articulated. Why? Because there would be no way for it to resist the stick in any world or be able to resist any harmful forces in a world in which the stick was able to imply pain. They have also conceived the argument that because it is the geopolitical cost by which we impose things that it comes before everything else, this means that there is no interpretation of debate without these pain arguments because this is the thing behind PTSD and the thing behind all these questions, which is the reason that our interpretation should come first on this question. Their role of the ballot is obviously just what the alternative text is, which is infinitely regressive and self-serving. Our alternative also is probably, uh, ours is also, also probably an inclusion, an inclusionary of theirs because they can talk about pain under that interpretation. Also, ours does not exclude the possibility that we talk about not pain. It just has a foreground part of our analysis now. They say that we, uh, I will answer this personal relationship argument on the link debate on the criticism, but they say that distancing leads to guilt. How uh, Distancing leads to guilt. However, yes, this is our argument. We talk about the bodies that are distancing as a result of drone warfare. The Brandon Bryan example was obviously true of this, but there are also other bodies who are distanced by the people who build the drones and the people on the ground who are forming. There is a lot of distancing that goes on. This is our argument. They say that they focus on the outside and the, the drones themselves. However, it's, it's obviously not true. They say that uh, they, they, they make another argument. That, uh, Just else. get to trigger warning. Yeah, um, I, I gotta answer talking yank. Um, they make this tuck and yang argument, however, it, uh, it tuck and yang argument, however, extend our piece of the value. Uh, is it, uh, yes. The, the value, how evidence it, it uh, Wait, the 2AC card? Yeah, 2AC card. Uh, just extend the argument. Uh, uh, extend the piece of 2AC evidence. It's, it's also the piece of 1AC evidence that we read. It, indicate, it indicates that we have to be able to talk about pain because it's the only way for privileged Jeez. students such as Michael and I to be able to realize that we are fucking complicit in what the United States is doing overseas. This is necessarily beneficial because it is the starting point of the 1AC. The tuck and yang evidence also is about uh, evidence about slave bodies and things of that nature, which is obviously not what our uh, argument is about. We are not commodifying bodies. They have also conceived the bearing witness piece of evidence that we read on the criticism, which indicates that we have an obligation in order to bear witness to these atrocities, even if they are painful for us. The alternative would be to slap a happy sticker on it and just ignore it, which is something that we should obviously not do. Also, we are not doing some sort of representation or painting a picture. We are obviously having to have some way in order to express that. Now, the trigger warning argument, they have conceded the argument that there is no difference between what they did and what we, uh, what we did. This is, a, this is a double turn argument. He says that they were less graphic. However, I, uh, uh, however, the fact that Michael has uh, issues has issues with depression and this the almost the entire first half of the second, the second half of the first semester, and the fact that I uh, I, I was missing my father for a lot of time because he was in the police. It's not something that we have to talk about, or it could be a trigger warning as a result of what they're saying. They also don't have an uh, answer to the gotcha moments bad argument, or the fact that they would have been able to check the wiki and talk with us. They talked with us for many minutes before about the 1AC while we explained it to them, and they were not willing to check us on that issue, which is the reason that, that would break down to be in some issues. They read a piece of evidence in the case of the turns case, however, we have to be able, able, to, able, able, able and willing to talk about pain. Uh, now, uh, yeah, they say that VA forces opiates on people. That's obviously not something that the app would endorse the criticism at the time. Bearing witness outweighs all of their arguments on this question is the very the Hughes evidence is very good. It indicates that we as a, a privileged students in the 1AC have an obligation in order to talk about what drugs are going on. They, uh, they would just change the channel on this question. They have also conceded that we did talk about related debates relationship to the drone, which was the entirety of the beginning of the 1AC when we read all of those plans as some sort of joke. But it's not just a joke because the debate is not going to talk about the real problems. Now I will try to sub point the link argument as the first of one. The first one is this experts argument, but this argument is kind of silly because in the very few of our people are, uh, are experts, even then, just because we have some experts in their 1AC doesn't decrease the fact that the most emotional and important part was the brain and Brian and this is the standard for Tampa Clinic evidence which was uh, about the people in Pakistan which is a singular focus they say that we should be forced to talk about our personal experience but confessing our personal privilege would be way worse we should have recent the discussion on ourselves of recent and small strained relationship before rather than lending stories to me for themselves and they think 13 has never quite come to the point of confession where we're not participants and I know it is down in here I uh, feel like any political process dismantled structures of uh, uh, domination the, uh, the, uh, the political process the development of the benefits of the female the sacred that we grant temporary forgiveness of uh, the relief from the only primary service 
sort of reinstate the structures of the domination supposed to resist or uh, resist. Uh, also, we question our privilege and we question our personal relationship because we say that we are complicit with it, with, with the entirety of the Gulani Sea. Their the next argument is that a uh, singular pain focus is bad, but we are not a singular pain focus. We just say that pain should be foregrounded in our analysis and that we can then talk about other things because pain is the most important of this question. The Zembali stuff, and it's the only one which is contextual to pain focus in the privileged academy that we should be forced to confront this. It, we, we're not to focus on pain. We were just to say that war can always be good in some instances. This would be the same as clapping. Uh, this would be the same as clapping at the uh, clapping and giving applause to veterans and instead of focusing on the fact that many of them are hurt by what the United States says. They say that we should welcome through story. However, uh, 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 they say that it solves the entirety of the case. However, we uh, solve them a lot better extending permutation. Their only argue, uh, their, their, their answers to the permutation are pretty silly, the, uh, 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 especially because they don't have a link to permutation you both solve. They, they both wouldn't function. However, it's, a, well, it's just a test of link. They say they, it wouldn't include part of it and it would still be an advocacy. However, this is really, uh, however, this question about it being an advocacy is ridiculous. We should be able to get some sort of link test. And, uh, they say it has to be carded like an advantage and that's a voter, but that's obviously not the same thing. None of their links are intrinsic uh, are intrinsic to what the one AC did or our role of the ballot. They say the multiple methodologies are bad, but this piece of evidence is not specific to their method. And just in the case that we have multiple ones, it would be bad. However, the, uh, however, the one AC can be able to have a starting point that include multiple things because that would be the best methodology, which is what you should center your uh, analysis around. They make this argument how Bush censored the images. However, that's obviously what they're trying to do. You should not censor the images that the one AC predicts because, it, uh, because then we can just justify war and say it, it is all clean. However, we are killing people and we should focus on this issue because it should be foregrounded in our analysis, they say that people are excluded in the now. They, people, they say that drones don't desensitize. They say that drones don't desensitize, but the piece of evidence just indicates that this is one person who says that drones didn't desensitize him, but it was obviously not true for Brandon Bryant, who spoke out for himself and indicates that his personal relationship with drones is bad. That their Spiegel evidence also ultimately concludes that drones are probably bad on this question. They say it's an approximate focus disadvantage. The ton evidence indicates that instead of focusing on what is going on, like all of the things that we are killing, <laughs> and the status quo just focus on the debate community, which is infinitely arrested and means we would never be able to solve historicity. Are you at 537? Yep. Yeah.
Is everyone ready? Yep. Yeah. We shape war with every word we dedicate to it, every eulogy given is another drop of the bucket, every nuclear war scenario is another, and the 1AC is another, my narrative is another, the power of war, at least in my life, resides in its discourse. It seems like I can't escape its grips. I fought a claim of the VA for PTSD, despite having treated me for it at their clinic, they classified me and diagnosed me with, uh, uh, class, uh, classified me for uh, ca uh, accounting purposes, with as anxiety not other spe otherwise specifies. They did this later, I found out, because they will only pay one mental health claim at a time, and knowing that I would win my appeal for PTSD because I was treated by them, it would be cheaper to pay me for anxiety than for PTSD. PTSD, that's pretty messed up, right? It was a bad day when I got that letter. I don't give a shit about disability money or feeling like something is owed to me. I want institutions to take responsibility for their actions. And many veterans like me are calling out administration to the VA for change. And where is it? It will take three to four years for my appeal to be heard. This is why the words that we matter and the way that we prosecute the things that we do is the only thing that can affect institutional change. So that's why our role about is important. The Christian part of the team that welcomes military veterans is a game for a couple of reasons. First, CNN 13, where Daniel Summers talked about the institutional neglect and indifference he felt. This is the only, this, this means that personalizing and engaging one another via the dialogical method of Storytelling is key to overcoming and overcoming this fractured identity. Debate can be a site, a, a, a site in, within education where we can do this through storytelling. But second, more twelve says that about how the storytelling process happens in order to prevent these twenty-two U.S. military veterans from feeling the alienation that leads them to pulling the trigger. Uh, uh, more, 12, more twelve specifically says that. Uh, sorry, more twelve specifically says that uh, narratives, uh, uh, the dialogical process of engaging in narratives, it creates discursive linkages in educational settings. These discursive linkages uh, create and supercharge more knowledge production. That means then. Uh, uh, in the world of the affirmative, uh, th th there is no knowledge production that includes veterans because they sim simply focus on pain and not the storytelling process that is necessary for these discursive linkages. That means they, uh, they, uh, they, the criticism is necessar necessarily a, a, a prerequisite to the affirmative uh, an affirmative knowledge production, which is their only claim to spill over. And third is to prevent this obsession with war by putting a personal face to the pain of combat, or at least personally relating to it, and so we can actually talk about something worthwhile and debate than another damn war topic. <clears throat> Furthermore, let's go to case. No new arguments on trigger warning, and the two, and they, uh, and the two, uh, the two AC and the one ER already had a chance to answer, and they are both shitty and defensive. They're just defensive, have no offense, protected by two NAR. It's not fair that I don't get a three NAR. It's just an a, a priori question of access. Look, this is an independent voting issue. We don't need to win any case arguments or the criticism to say that they, the shit they have done is messed up enough to reject them because of what their method is in particular. I'll just start with the defense because the reaction is enough to prove that their method is flawed, if not able. As first, wiki doesn't check. You will, would need a trigger warning on your wiki for your wiki to check, which you do not have. Otherwise, people will just traumatize themselves with they're reading it on your wiki, and their wiki doesn't even say there's a description of the event. It doesn't say like he said, uh, Mr. Bryant uh, gives a description of his uh, of his method. It literally just says like Mr. Bryant felt X. And B, it doesn't shut down debate. Uh, trigger warnings are not used to shut down debate. It restores agency. They can still do what they want to do, but allows me to say what I want to do. Look, even if I had, even if they had put it up and said, hey, here's a trigger, and then I said, John, guess what? You got to give all the speeches. I can't handle this shit. <laughs> that would have been better than the potential triggering because guess what? This extend across now our offense. This is a McCutton 12 piece of evidence. It says if the app is going to discuss mental pain, they must be oriented towards accessibility. That turns case because their knowledge production is limited to only the able body. The only the able body can engage and en 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 engage, particularly when you're talking about episodes of PTSD. Having people that can actually, you know, might have that experience is probably critical to their uh, cr critical to their uh, knowledge production. Um, furthermore. Uh, <coughs> Oh, answer the the double turn. Um, they they say I did it for competitive advantage. Honestly, like uh, uh, honestly, it, 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 my own partner didn't even know when I was having a trigger. They can't tell whether I'm being triggered or not. This numbness and not being able to tell is actually a a, a distinct combat um, evolution. And they say uh, that um. They say the, the double turn that they also experience this with the depression. McCutt is pretty specific on what can and cannot be triggered episodes. You can't just trigger an episode of depression. While it is awful, and I suffer from parts of it myself, it is not something that you can physically re-experience. This is the problem, with, particularly with PTSD, is that you literally physically re-experience and shut down. That means that I'm not only able to not, not complete the round if that happens, but also not able to debate for the rest of the day. If your focus is going to be on pain and PTSD, you should have a goddamn trigger warning. But moreover, Tuck and Yang are reasons why when we focus on stories as a starting point, a story, uh, on pain as a starting point, that allows uh, that allows government and other institutions to manipulate the story so it's only pain. We'll talk about this more on the criticism. Direct quote from the one ER, debate is not going to talk about the real problems, i.e. they only want to talk about war. That's the meta uniqueness claim we've been controlling. That's why our world about is key, yeah, pre key pre prerequisite. They say that it's infinitely regressive and self-serving, but our world about isn't self-serving if, if you view it as a prerequisite. It's not like we're saying these are the only people that should be served. These are the only people we should talk about. We're saying we should stop excluding these people. They, also, this impact turns pain good because some veterans don't, shouldn't have to engage their pain, and also some veterans have more than just pain to relate to war. All that 1AC focuses on in relation to war is pain. Go to the perm.
If we want a link that proves multiple methods bad, look, you heard them, it's just a test of the links. That means they can't resolve any links, right? But we all know two A's are cheaters. I'll bet you my bag of beef jerky, he's gonna get up here and tell you that the perm resolves the links. Well, guess what? Plan focus, pain focus, and storytelling focus are two different things. That is our MMR, I'm at still evidence, I'm MMR 12, which means that not only will this be, uh, not, not, not only is this a reason they shouldn't get the perm, but it's also a reason that it is net worse than both the critique and the case alone, or where you combine both those methods. Imagine if you write a paper with a qualitative research method and a quantitative research method, and somehow try to combine them in like a five page paper like a, a debate round that would be a shitty paper right we all know that they say that uh, 1ac is a starting point to include multiple things that doesn't mean that you get to include multiple things that we have a link to let's go to the links I'm going to go for the way that they manipulated Brian's story and tried to, uh, tried to use him in the permutation. They say that uh, drones don't desensitize. I dare you to look in the Dare Spiegel evidence and find where Brian says he felt desensitized. He does not say he felt desensitized. He says, in fact, quite the opposite. He was very uh, sensitized to what was going on. This is the real way that pain is managed. And this approves both our uh, Tuck and Yang, uh, Tuck and Yang turns when, the, when they are telling a poor imp implementation of someone else's narrative why you need a face to the pain of combat trauma. This is why personal experience is key through storytelling. Storytelling and personal experience is enough to vote on. You should vote on trigger warning first because a priori issue. We have 230. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, Are they muted still? Because they were looking in the wrong building. Hey man, I keep my blows. No, I don't have no idea what's going on. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Good. <clears throat> 
affect outweighs discourse. This is a pretty consistent argument throughout the debate, especially when you should have felt something from the one you see. When they uh, talked about the uh, child being a dog, uh, there being a dog who walked out from behind the set. When they talked about the people who are constantly afraid, not knowing what another uh, drone strike was happening. This is not just the words we use. It was the performance of the one you see. It was what you felt as it happened. This means that even if we describe war in a particular way, we are now we do not link to the way that the status quo debate community can describe war because we uh, I mean, are an affective injection of the way that we ought to do it. This is why uh, I also... Uh also, I think that the two in our framing of why like, institutional focus is good is entirely new. They Block did not basically say the word institution. They talked about what we need to uh, take personal relationships. This inconsistency is a reason that you should not give them a lot of alternative or any alternative uh, weight, which means that I just have to win uh, the personal uh, aspect bad in this. this is especially when they have dropped the uh, 1AR Smith card, which says that if I were to just come up here and die, they have some strained relationship to war, like I lived 10 minutes uh, for like I lived 10 minutes from a military base where my dad. Uh, uh, was gone a lot because he traveled for work even though he wasn't part of the military. That would be way worse because it would be recentering the discussion on me instead of the really important stories we have in the one I see. This uh, means that the uh, personal uh, narratives are probably not worse in debate because they subtract from the substance to focus, i.e. this is what the CFR would love it to do if we just talked about our personal relationships and were never interrogated things outside of ourselves. This uh, say that, uh, that Moore says uh, the storytelling process is key. Yes, you can tell a story, but you cannot just tell your story and believe that you can only focus on what is in your proximity. This leads ton uh, evidence in the piece of evidence I read about uh, in the Tracy whose name escapes me that says that we do not live under drones in the United States. If I were to talk about what it's like to live under drones, that would be disingenuous, which means that in education we uh, should focus on making uh, privileged students not be rationalized and not rationalize away their complicity or the source of the huge evidence. They have effectively turned the channel on the one they see and said we just didn't focus on the right thing so we shouldn't get to talk. It is, uh, I'm not saying that you just have to talk about pain, just that we should uh, foreground pain that we should use it to, uh, we, that we should refuse to inflict it on others and tell our stories. This is not a prerequisite to our knowledge production because the knowledge production of the Wendy C happened when we uh, affectively related to the Wendy C, not uh, about any particular knowledge production that we say is good. Now move on to the trigger warning argument on case. Look. They link as well. They to the two in ours just said that like depression is not the same thing as PTSD, which is not uh, an answer to our argument. There is no bright line for what constitutes a trigger. There is no bright line for what is a triggering situation scenario. The fact that they didn't answer the fact that I missed the uh, that I missed most of first semester because I fucking attempted suicide and didn't get even put a trigger warning on the one and C should mean that this argument should not get a lot of weight, especially when they have a pretty essentialist notion of what we should focus on. What should I put a trigger warning when I uh, uh, look? Should I read them? They were joking about us before the round. They did not even attempt to approach us about this. They didn't even ask us. The fact that they this was a gotcha moment in the 1NC in an argument that they have not answered probably means that this is not a D rule. It's just a reason that if this was a like if this was a debate we had earlier in the year, we definitely would have done that after this debate. But the fact that we don't have that opportunity means that we should not lose the final round of the season just because we did not put a, another entry on our wiki. Also, the fact that our evidence, our evidence does say that Mr. Bryan is going to tell his story about the way that he felt as sensitized as an operator of drone programs means that you it's probably a reasonable expectation that there would be a description of something pretty bad happening. Also, uh, they say that uh, they say that uh, it, it's better to that it is better to shut down debates than to trigger people. Yes, now, that may be true in some instances, but since they don't have a bright line for what constitutes a trigger or who we should care about in this situation. That means that mental accessibility uh, should not come first because there are very important issues that are not proximate to our own lives that we should still talk about, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it uh, causes us to do bad things. This is also not excluding it to the able body. What constitutes an able body? Was I an able body when I was sitting in a hospital bed? Uh, try uh, and uh, when I was sitting in a hospital bed and they were uh, tending to my wounds, was, uh, was I an able body in that scenario just because I was cutting politic shards from the hospital? Why uh, does this mean that they should win the round. Also, it is not key to our knowledge production because uh, you, even if you cannot tell uh, who it is, that is an experience you should feel, i.e. that you may feel, uh, you may feel affect from the one he's seen. He may have felt uh, affect from the one he's seen in a different way, but that doesn't mean that we, uh, that doesn't mean that it is a reason that the experiences of those uh, that the AF talks about should matter. Now, the Tuck and Yang evidence, he literally just said it enables government manipulation. We have a piece of Hughes evidence that says that is the status quo because we just talk about it on uh, the news and things like that in a monotone voice in our uh, forced to confront it, which means that privileged students should not get to rationalize their way out of it uh, just on the tech level of a debate. We should be forced to confront the affect. Now onto the K. 
I think the permutation uh, solved a lot of their uh, solved a lot of their offense because uh, it mean, uh, it, uh, because it means that we do not have to exclusively focus on pain. Even if uh, even if we should uh, for tell stories, we do not have to just tell stories. Uh, we should do not have to tell stories about pain all the time, but we should definitely uh, forefront them in our analysis. They've conceded all the one error extrapolation about what pain come um, first because their impacts are imperceptible without pain. What does it uh, mean to be triggered without pain? What does it mean to be in a hospital bed or at the VA to deny your th uh, to, to, to deny your request without? Pain? Pain. They, uh, we, we do not only want to talk about war. It, uh, also, you should extend our role about that. You should focus on who best performatively and methodology logically interrogates the role of pain. This, uh, their role of the ballot is infinitely regressive because there are an infinite number of alternative texts. But this uh, means that we uh, should at least get the permutation to test whether the links over thing. They uh, say that uh, you can't do a paper with quantitative and qualitative. People do this all the time, which is probably the analogy that flips out. They say that we manipulate a story. Well, uh, the Der Spiegel evidence. Look, our argument was that the government was desensitized. I the person who said that it was a dog on two legs. Not that every person uh, is desensitized. Their link work is extremely poor. The, the link work in the two and I was very shallow. They obviously just wanted to go for the trigger warning argument. Permutation solves a lot of that. You should not lose our last debate of the year.
it's a you know, switch is the same.
you in the chair. Yep. Yep. Oh, wait. Did somebody want to complete? I, I got it. Oh. It's on. Watch your language. Well, we're in a minute behind. Do you want to? Sure. Uh, the decision grid bait. The decision is a 3 0 3 from Kansas State. Uh, before we start, is this anybody's last debate? Yay. All right. Congratulations, Ben. Uh, then this is up to you. You can hear as much or as little of this as you want. Um, you can do whatever you want. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I began this tournament um, not so in giving any shits. Because uh, <laughs> I'm really? off to uh, do some more military things, and so and, uh, I'm leaving school a little bit early. Um, but... This, this round in particular, I think, is important, like the discussion that we're having, because right now, it, particularly in the Accessibility uh, Debate uh, Coalition Facebook page, we're trying to figure out what trigger warnings mean in debate, when people need to use them, <coughs> and those discussions need to happen, so, yeah, I'll say. Cool. Um, so do you want to hear our decision? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, well, I, I can go first, and I'll talk about the trigger warning thing first. Um, I ended up feeling really difficult uh, d deciding to vote on that for y'all. Uh, because of the discussion of suicide in this debate. Um, and I don't know how I can resolve kind of two competing uh, claims to trigger warnings. Um, when at a couple points during this debate, I think y'all, um, and this was pointed out with them early in the debate, and then later um, some of the discussions that y'all have had um, about suicide um, seem like things that also would require a similar level of, uh, of, of trigger warning. Um, and uh, I have my own personal thoughts about trigger warnings and in general, and I think that there's a certain a debate to be had about kind of what that all means, but that wasn't forwarded in this debate, but what was forwarded was uh, that argument that it would be difficult for me to resolve that in terms of, of one team or another because of that argument. Um, I, that relates to me personally. Um, uh, certainly I have much more experience with suicide than PTSD, and it's something that I do feel a strong emotional reaction to um, certainly not to the level of uh, triggering a panic attack, but I can understand why it would be difficult for me to decide that one thing would and the other th and, and, and one other thing sure. wouldn't. Um, the, re the rest of the debate, I think that the permutation, um, because of the time allocation mostly in the 2 and R, uh, I think that the permutation is able to resolve a lot of these arguments. I think that, what, that two things really uh, needed to be forwarded by, by you was an argument which I've seen you've made before, which is a much more argument about how permutations can function because they can't capture performance or the storytelling that we've done and that sort of thing. And I think you need to make a stronger argument about what in this debate um, capturing a, sto a story or another thing does. Uh, the second thing um, was that I thought your best link arguments, which I thought you really were developing the 2NC about um, uh, either about di about distancing, um, it, but in particular, um, why uh, war? I mean, wh honestly, I think the kind of arguments about why there are positive experiences within war, yes. um, with the kind of homogenization or the, and I think you can kind of de describe them as the, you know, you should kind of describe the affirmative as that kind of aggressive peacenik. Um, kind of uh, uh, that views war and conflict as always, uh, always and necessarily bad, um, which is not, you know, which is a fairly defensible thing that there are positive aspects of, of conflict um, and positive uh, and the positive experiences of particular soldiers that come out of that. Those are, I thought that was your best link argument, um, especially um, uh, uh, to uh, the way about they remove the agency of drone operators and that sort of thing. So I think you can describe more about the resistance that sort of thing, but I think those didn't get talked about very well. And the two and R because of the time allocation on um, the trigger. Work. So how do you think he answers the? So does perm resolve any links? Like how, why does perm get to resolve links? Because I mean, well, I think it resolves uh, the kind of uh, mutual. Uh, so the, the one the one clear argument you had in the two and R was about the the mutual competition between storytelling and pain. And I think it does resolve that <coughs> idea that I can embrace a methodology of both uh, telling stories about things that are not pain and also telling stories about pain. I think they win some net benefits to the reasons why it is good to focus on external. And this is what I think is a kind of net benefit of the permutation, focusing on external uh, harms that are outside of our own per, uh, per personal uh, uh, social lo location, and that the alternative sole focus on personal storytelling, or that's at least the way they're able to spin it, again, possibly because of time and the 2 and R, uh, means that uh, means that it would it would not be a good methodology for me to embrace because it would cause us to not look towards um, the kind of uh, uh, suffering of people uh, po it, it, that are not soldiers and also people outside our own personal experience. So that's the kind of proximity focus argument that I thought they were winning as a net benefit to, the, to that, even if you won, the perm had some kind of residual link. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 
So the trigger warning, I, I thought it was sort of a mistake to go for on the 2 and R because I agree with what Dylan said. That, that um, it's, I thought that the cross six of the one and C, I'm gonna move so I can see. I thought the cross six of the one and C was sort of bad for y'all. Uh, when they were like, where was your trigger warning about suicide? And you were like, it's there. And then you looked in the attack and then it wasn't there. And I thought that that was sort of a bad ethos moment for um, the two of you, because I sort of agree with the, with the affirmative characterization and what Dylan said that is, um, just because one is more graphic than the other, which I agree with you that their depiction was a lot more graphic, a lot more detailed, and a lot longer time-wise, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't inspire or couldn't inspire the same feelings in someone who had someone close to them commit suicide or had other personal experiences with it. And so I thought that uh, it kind of it kind of cut both ways, that both teams maybe ought to have included it, um, but it, since, since um, you know, you were kind of guilty of the same thing. I thought that it was difficult for me to vote, um, vote negative on that. So I guess my main question on that is if, I, I guess I was trying to distance myself by saying like, oh, well, our advocacy isn't about pain and you can't just talk about pain without a trigger warning. Does that not get it shielded enough? I don't think so because okay. I think that, well, to me that kind of begs the question of what pain is. Like a, a CNN article that talks about how a, a military veteran kills themselves. Oh, right. Like, no, like we did it too. I just mean like our uh -huh. focus isn't pain. If your focus is going to be pain, you got to do it. Really I don't. Great. I don't think. So. I don't okay. think so because I think that it can be. It is something that I mean. I think someone could have post-traumatic stress disorder from having some losing someone in their life sure. to suicide. Um, and so you know, saying that you don't focus on pain just because the intent isn't on on pain doesn't mean that the outcome couldn't be painful to someone else. Uh, and so that's why I think that they're to to win that argument. I think you needed. Uh, a, a trigger warning there. Otherwise, it's kind of difficult for me to see a difference um, in terms of how other people might respond to it. Even though I, I think that there is a difference between the two, other people might not respond the same way, and it's other people's reactions and feelings to right. that uh, who might, you know, that they might react in the same way. Um, so I'll talk about something different. I thought the affirmative was a little bit ahead on the roll of the ballot. I thought you kind of let them shift throughout the debate. The one I see, to me, seems to say pain is more important than any other effect. And the 2AR and 1AR eventually become, you don't have to be exclusively pain, you just have to foreground pain. Um, and I thought that you were getting somewhere in the cross X, and this is where my decision overlaps with Dylan's, that about um, their joyous stories of uh, brotherhood and um, you know, joyous stories, and, or, and good stories, even if not joyous, of, of military experience, but I thought that the negative strategy centered a lot around painful experiences. And like, even the story of father standing up to applause, feeling uncomfortable like that, it might not be pain in the traditional sense, but it's still uncomfortable and kind of centered around negative experiences. And so when they're like, you should foreground pain, I think that their role of the valid argument would solve a lot of of painful experiences that contribute possibly to post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's basically like pain underlies PTSD, so if we can in introduce painful stories and things like that into debate, uh, then I think that they would solve a decent amount of your impact there. I think you still have offense with uh, the Tuck and Yang argument and the personal face on combat, but I have three problems with that. Number one, um, you say that they just <laughs> tell the story poorly, I don't know that they necessarily do, and I don't think that that's developed out enough. So that's one of your arguments, that they just use someone else's story, they tell it poorly, but I think that the story is his actual words, and it's kind of in context of the rest of the affirmative. It's not, I, I didn't feel like it was kind of haphazardly attached to the end of the 1AC just to beat the argument. It seems kind of internally consistent. Number two, um, I don't think this is impacted in something external to We Solve War, so if they solve military voices, which solves war, uh, then I don't think that there's an external effect there. And then finally, um, you were phrasing the last part about putting a personal face on combat, which is uh, is worthwhile, that's an actual quote from the two in our, that it's worthwhile to do so. Um, I don't think that's offense against the plan. So I think that's a reason why your alternative would solve, but I don't think that that's a reason why their approach of, uh, uh, their approach is not a desirable one versus the status quo, or why they wouldn't um, similarly solve pain and solve maybe some war. Um, this is going to sound out. I actually need you to turn the live stream off for my second. Yep. Sorry.